So just a quick little recall, what the scalar equation of a plane is and what the normal vector of this plane is. You started to see a little bit yesterday already how important the normal of the equation is. And the normal is at a right angle to the plane. So if this is plane, uh oh, what happened? Hmm. And I might have, you could have tons of uh, infinite vectors in this plane, but as long as I have two, and they don't, those look like they're perpendicular to each other. They don't have to be. Or I could have one pointing the other way. As long as it's not pointing opposite of one of those two, which it kind of looks like it is. Ugh. Maybe I have another one pointing out like this. I don't know. Okay, in the plane, as long as you have two and another point then you've got a defined plane. If you had three vectors parallel to the plane, not in the plane, we don't really call vectors in the plane, right? Parallel to the plane, that wouldn't help because that doesn't tell us where, like I, if I've got my two vectors, great. I know the orientation, but I don't know kind of where it is, right? I know this, I, I know this compared to that, but I don't know this. So you need another point, having more vectors wouldn't help. Okay, all right, here we go. Given the normal of the plane and a point on the plane, find the scalar equation. We did this a lot of times yesterday, so you can go ahead and get started on that one if you want to. Who can remind me what to do here? Very nice. So I can do 2x plus 3y plus 1z plus d equals 0, where those are the coefficients of the normal. Not only is the normal easy, but it turns out it's really simple from the scalar equation. Like it's just such a nice relationship, right? And then I have a point. And why do I need this point? Because I need to find the value of d. Interesting how I need two vectors parallel to the plane and a point or the normal, one and a point. It's actually better to have the normal than vectors parallel to the plane. This actually gives us more information because if you think about it, if I have the normal, I could use that to find as many um, vectors parallel to the plane as I want. That's something that we might have to do, right? So it turns out having the normal is better. So two times four plus three times two plus five plus D equals zero. And D works out to negative 19. Is that right? Has anybody done that? Yes. So therefore, my equation is 2x plus 3y plus z minus 19 equals 0. Is this point on the plane? What am I going to do for that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, simple as that. Left side, right side, check. And I believe this works out to negative 12. Is that right? Which is 
which is not equal to the right side. Therefore, Q is not in the plane. Pretty easy so far. C, is A parallel to the plane? Hmm. This is where you got to start thinking about properties, a little bit of problem solving. Maybe it seems simple, but again, it's like, to me, this is where it starts to get okay. So I got to think about what I know about the plane and properties of the plane and, and how those properties relate to each other, that kind of thing. So who thinks they know what to do? I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. Okay, I want you to turn and talk to somebody close to you just quickly. What can you do? Okay, good. It sounds like this might be a little bit harder than I thought. Some people aren't too sure. Some groups sound like maybe they're on to something. What do you think? What did you come up with? Did you guys come up with anything? Not really. Okay. Emma? If it's parallel, who? Okay, hold on. If it's parallel to the plane, then it's perpendicular to the normal. Can somebody confirm or challenge that statement? One or the other. Does anybody agree with that? Or does anybody just, yes, you agree with that? You're willing to confirm that and we can go forward? Every single vector? Yes, that's the whole point of the normal. Yes, I know. I said that to cast doubt. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, there's a trick to this. No, you're right. But it's important that... You... <laughs> this is the thing. Is It's important that you can confirm it for yourself and not just look to some, out, some outside source for confirmation, right? You want to be able to like, yeah, 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 of course. Every That's the whole point. That's what the normal is. That's what it means. All vectors parallel to the plane are going to be perpendicular to the normal. So you said dot product, and I heard you guys agreed with that, the dot product with, so this is gonna be, um, so check a dot n. a dot n and n dot a, is there a difference? So we could do n dot a as well would be fine. So, this is 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus negative 3 times 1. Two plus 6 minus 3, so that gives us 5 which is not equal to 0. I'm putting this not because you would have to state that 5 is not equal to 0 every time you solve this question. Obviously, 5 isn't equal to 0. Why am I stating that? Just because for us, as a reminder, that's about what about this conclusion tells us, therefore, A is not parallel to the plane. We don't have a name for the plane, I don't think so the plane uh, because it's not equal to zero. Anything, if you've got zero, then it is parallel. Anything else, it's not, right? Okay, good.
Remember back when we talked about the dot product, it's an if and only if. If they're zero, they're perpendicular. If they're perpendicular, it will be zero. So there we go. Find another vector that is normal to the plane. What do you think? Sure could. Okay, so remember n is 2, 3, 1. Don't multiply by 0. How about the opposite? That's easy. Or how about multiplying by 2? And so on. Pick your favorite number. Multiply by pi. 2 pi, 3 pi, pi. I don't think so. I'm not sure this is a question that would find its way onto the test. It maybe is too simple. It might. Um, I, it, it's kind of like state one, so you don't really have to show work for it. All right. What are we given in this case? See, it takes some time to build confidence when you're learning new notation. I think. Especially sometimes things that just have a slight little twist to them and it makes you question like, hmm, is this different or is this the same? So what are we given? Emma? Yeah, scalar notation, but it's like standard notation exactly. It's the same thing, kind of similar to standard notation, but it's a scalar equation of a plane. Very good. So how can I use that to come up with the normal? So do you know what it is? Can you do it for me? Yeah, very nice. So the only thing that's kind of different about this, whoop, I'm going to say n equals, is it's missing the y term, but it just means the coefficient is 0. Find a vector that is parallel to the plane. This is different from check the vectors if the vector is parallel. So what am I going to do here? Because again, you may have doubt, like, is there a process for this? Alaf, what do you think? So like, guess and check is what you're saying, right? So um, a vector that is parallel to the plane means dot product equals zero. That's what that means. We need to know that. Dot product with n. equals zero. So I would do this. N is three, zero, two. So it's like three times something plus zero times something plus two times something has to equal zero. You don't need to write this part. So how about like negative two and positive three? 3 times 2 and 2 times 3 and just make sure that they're opposite signs and I can put whatever I want in there. Or I could have done 2 and negative 3, I think. Or I could have done 2 and pi and negative 3. Because that middle term happened only because this happens to be 0 in the normal. That gave me flexibility for my y term. Right? My, the second value in there could be whatever I want. Make it easy on yourself. Don't overthink it. So, I mean, if there's questions, we're going to keep trucking forward. Like I said, this is, today is about a lot of little things. Given this equation, find the vector that is normal to the plane. What are we given? What are we given? Vector equation of? I see you. The plane that we're talking about, a plane, the plane. Yes, exactly, right? And when we took the learning goal, we saw a vector equation of a line and how it's different. This has two components because it has two direction vectors. But it's the plane that we're talking about. And they want us to find the vector that is normal to the plane. How am I going to do that? 
This will become something we do a lot of, I think. So, you know, this is the first time seeing it, so you got to think. But if you don't practice, you might forget. You might have to think again. I've got two people who have an idea. One person has half an idea, maybe. Anybody else have thoughts? Okay, I, the three of you that have your hand up, don't tell me the answer. Di let's dissect what we're given. So we're given the equation of a plane, but what in that equation is useful that will allow me to find the normal? Can somebody answer that, one of you three or somebody else? I'm given two direction vectors. If you didn't notice that, or if you weren't aware of that, it's important to know. It's important to know what information the vector form of a plane is giving us. Okay, so turn and talk to somebody what, how you can use that to find the normal of the plane. So what is it? Cross product, very nice. So if the, I'm going to call this up here A and this up here B. Don't call them S and T. Those are multipliers. That's like the M, right? That's like, um, so don't do that. And this could be called P. Whether or not we need it later, we'll find out. So I'm going to do A cross B. Hmm. And... This is, this is, put your pencil down for a second and just look. Because this is something I could see people getting confused with. This is a position vector. Different from a direction vector. It is not parallel to the plane. Oh, I mean, it might be. But it's, pro, but it's usually not. That's the position vector that starts at zero and goes up to a point on the plane. We write it in vector form because this is a vector form of an equation. So everything's a vector. If it was a point and then I tried to add it to vectors, that wouldn't make sense mathematically. So we have to write it as a vector form. But it's really a point. So don't use that in the cross product. That would be a mistake. Don't say, hey, actually, I've got three vectors here. I could use any of them. No. Okay, you can't. So you got to use A cross B. And you got to write this whole thing out. It makes it super easy. Usually, if you write out our little organizer, um, then I can just I can do the cross product in one step. Zero times six is six, so minus four is negative four. Two times zero is zero minus negative six. That's positive six, and negative two minus zero is negative two. Yep. I might have said that I meant to say zero. Because then when I multiply, when I subtract 2 times 2, which is 4, I get negative 4. I think I got the right answer. I probably said that. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. And this is, uh, this is, the cross product is just the cross product. It's not like by definition my normal. Remember we talked about this yesterday. So I can pick my normal just in case I get a cross product that's got big numbers or decimals or something in it. I could, I could clean it up a bit. In this case, I'm just going to make the first term positive. Oh, actually, no, sorry, I can reduce this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divide by negative 2. So I get 2, negative 3, and 1. Let's make it a little bit easier. Find a point on the plane. Thank you. Just use our position vector as a point. That's what it is by definition. So I can just use that. Again, you don't have to make it complicated. Find or the scalar equation of the plane. How are we going to do that? That should be becoming... Once you have the normal, you got most of it. We got the normal and a point. We can come up with the scalar equation of the plane.
Any questions? So last example, we were given vector form. In this case, we're given scalar form. Seems all the same, but it does, you know, a little bit different. It's good to try all of these different kinds. So give a vector that's normal to the plane. Hopefully you know that that's easy. So go ahead and do that. Find two points on the plane. How are we going to do this? If you sub in of what? Sorry, though. Yeah. Okay, good. So what kind of values would you suggest? Do you have any ideas? Well, we already have the equation. Find like when I look at this equation, can you well, it's a little bit you you're you're right. But it's a little bit harder because I have x y z. So what values am I going to plug in that's going to make it work? Okay, nice. Just make it work. I like what you started with. Good. Let's make it easy. You said plug in 4 for x. What about 0 and 0? So my a point is going to be 4, 0, 0. And then for b, what could I do? How about 0, negative 2, 0? If I needed a third, it would be uh, 0, 0, 4 over 3. Not quite as nice, but... Okay, very good. Determine A, B. Again, this is just giving us a flavor of the kinds of things you might be asked. We need to know how to do all of these different things. Um, and there's a reason why we do this. It is bringing out different properties, different ways that we can figure things out about a plane that we might need. In scalar form, it doesn't give me any direction vectors. How could I do that? Well, I would have to maybe, I guess, find either from the normal create some direction vectors or come up with some points and then use those points to create some vectors. Any vector between two points in the plane will be parallel to the plane. Maybe that should be stated. Any two points in the plane, the direction vector between them will be parallel to that plane, right? So, okay. So we subtract backwards. B minus A, so is this negative 4, negative 2, 0? Of course, 4, 2, 0 would also be a direction vector parallel to the plane, but that would be BA. And then show that AB is perpendicular to N. It had better be. We know N, we've got that from part A. We've got AB from C. AB is parallel to the plane. N is the normal to the plane. So they better be perpendicular. So what do I do? Somebody remind me again for the dot product. Hmm. 
negative 4 plus 4 plus 0, which equals 0. Don't just leave it at equals 0. You have to interpret it. We all know that's what that means, but that's the point. Therefore, it's perpendicular. What are we given here? Parametric form. So all of a sudden, oh, this is new. Well, if you're given parametric, maybe you just convert it to a more useful form, and then you can use a, that more useful form to get the information that you need. I think this is going to kind of walk us through that process, but that's the idea of what you might do on a test. What if you were given symmetric form? You could use that to you could use that to go to parametric and then go to vector and then go to scalar and then I don't know depending on what you're asked to do next right so if we're going to write this in vector form so my position vector comes from those the x the y the z right so it's going to be negative two one six plus s, and then the coefficients of s. So 3, 1, 0, plus t, and the coefficients of t, negative 1, 0, 3. Find a vector that's normal to the plane. We did this already, but how, what do I do? Use the direction vectors as A and B, and do A cross B. Find a vector that is normal to the plane, so A cross B. Doesn't really look like I can reduce that one, so I'll just say the normal is that. Find a point on the plane. Anybody have an idea for this one? It's tricky. Yeah, just use the point that's there, very good. Which is negative two, one, six. Is from vector form. And then find the scalar again. So go ahead and do this. I'm going to give you a minute to do that. But again, this is something that's relatively easy now that we have the information that we need. But folks, you might just be given parametric and say, convert this to scalar. What would be the steps of doing that? A, B, C, D of the thing that we just did, right? So this walked you through it. But a, but a more important thing for you to be able to do is convert from one to the other without being given those steps. And that would make it a little bit tricky. Like then you, you're, you, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Like you really have to know, I'm given this information, I can use that to do this, which I can use to do this, which I can use to do this and this, and then that. That whole process with several small steps outlined for us. And you do it yourself.
3x minus 9y plus z plus 9 equals 0. Would we get that? Nice. 